What's happening? Hello world, this is Johnny DeLuca. Welcome to your 76 SQL Server tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to perform a full database backup. So to begin, go ahead and connect to an instance of SQL Server and then once you're there and good to go, let's go to our databases folder. Let's expand that. Then we're looking for AdventureWorks 2012. We are going to right click it, then we're going to pass, then we want to go to backup. Okay, now once we're here in the backup dialog box, you can select a different database to backup, but for now, we're just going to accept the selected database, which is AdventureWorks 2012. You can also change the backup from uh, full to differential. But now we just see right here, we're going to go ahead and accept full backup for now. Uh, in the next section, backup set, you can right here, backup set, you can specify a name and description for the database backup. But for now, we're just going to accept the default and you can enter a description if you like. And then after that, right here. Um, also in that same section, you can specify when the backup will expire and can be overwritten by SQL Server. It should be noted that the backup files can be removed by using other tools and through the operating system. If you accept the default of zero, that means the backup never expires, which is what we want. So we're going to leave that there. Then uh, down here under the destination section, you can specify whether you will back up to disk or tape. The tape option will not be enabled unless you have a device attached to the server, which you probably don't. So pay no mind to that at the moment. Um, by default, the configured backup location is automatically included. If you had not created a device, the backup could have been stored directly in the location specified. Okay, but right now I want to show you what it looks like to add one. So we're going to remove this default location right here. So click remove. Okay, then we're going to click add. And then it brings up that uh, this default location right here, which is what I want. But we click the ellipsis button here, it gives us a little more of what's going on. As you can see, I've done this before. So for you, this might be uh, empty right here. So you would want to go down here and type in AdventureWorks2012.bak is what you would put in there and click OK twice. But I don't need to do that, so I'm just going to click it and then click OK once, twice, and there's where it's going to be stored as we just saw. Okay, now from here, we're going to want to go over to the Select a Page pane, and we want to go to Options. Alright, by default, we have Append it to the existing backup set. Um, but we don't want that right now, so we're going to want to select Overwrite All Existing Backup Set. And by selecting this option, we will be emptying the backup set. If you accept the default choice to append, you will add a new backup file to the media set during each subsequent backup. In addition to deciding whether to overwrite, you can also choose to check the media set name and backup expiration. If you select this box, you can either enter an existing media set name or leave the media set name blank to create a new one, but we're going to leave it blank. Now, this right here, we don't need that right now, but something to be aware of. Um, you can also decide to back up to a new media set. Do not select this option, accept the default backup to existing media set. Okay, so what we have right here, this is what we want boom and boom. Okay, now we have the reliability section. Um, where we have verify backup when finished, we have perform checksum before writing to media, and we have uh, continue on error. Um, we want to just go ahead and leave these blank for the moment, although those can all be very valuable in certain circumstances. But uh, anyways, moving on, and then right here we see the transaction log is uh, grayed out, and the reason is because since we're performing a full backup, the transaction log section 
won't be enabled. And since the tape drive is not available, the tape drive section is also not enabled. So those are both grayed out. We don't need them. Okay, finally, you can decide whether or not to compress a backup. If you specify to compress the backup, SQL Server will, re will reduce the size of the backup, which ultimately saves you space. The amount of space saved depends on several factors, one of them being the type of data within the database. That would probably be the primary factor. Um, compression can be set at the server level or individually. For now, we're just going to accept the default and be good there. So we're going to go ahead and just click OK. And now it's going to execute our backup. And once the backup is complete, we can browse back to the C drive there. That would see colon backslash program file backslash Microsoft server backslash MS SQL 11 dot MS. Anyways, it's so long I could just uh, show you where that would be again. We would just go back like we're doing it all over again. We wanted to see. And actually, you already did see when I uh, showed you how to remove right here and then add. And then we'd go to the ellipsis. And here's a shortcut to it. There it is right there. You should see the same thing now. And, you know, additionally, you could just actually go out on to your C drive and navigate to it that way etc etc but anyways okay so thanks for checking this tutorial out in my next tutorial I'm going to show you how to perform a full database backup using T-SQL and you know what actually why don't I just show okay to do that let's go grab my script I have saved right here how to perform a full database backup using T-SQL that's what I want grab this copy this uh, we can cancel out. We already did this. Did this. All right. Now we're going to go up here to our new query editor. Go ahead and type in the following T SQL code and execute. Executing query. Query executed successfully. Pretty cool. Go ahead and save that script. You could use it later, modify it to back up different data databases if you like. So now you know how to create, to perform a full database backup using SQL Server Management Studio as well as how to do it using T-SQL. In my next tutorial, I'm going to cover differential database backup. You're not going to want to miss either of them, so see you there. Bye.